This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. In association with Micromax. Nothing like anything. Hi folks and welcome to a brand new episode of CNB here on the NDTV network. I'm Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. As you can tell, it's a very different setting that uh, we have on the program for you today. I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag just yet, so you'll have to wait and see what kind of surprises we have in store for you. Instead, let's talk about a brand new car that's just driven into our market and you are pretty curious about it. I'm not talking about the Tata Zest because we've already showed you this review before. We have more on this car, but that's later. First, let's start talking about the all-new second-generation i20 from Hyundai. Now, this car is something the company claims is going to revolutionize its particular segment, become a benchmark of sorts. Is that claim really true? Bala has had some chance to uh, spend some time with the car, get to know it, drive it. Here's his review. It was a fitting replacement for the very smart Getz and so when we first saw it in 2008, we liked it. Then four years later, the midlife makeover in 2012 had it go partly fluidic. And so to say that the second generation Hyundai i20 has some big shoes to fill would be an understatement. Hyundai's recent global unveiling in India was proof that the car maker is intent on getting its domestic market focus right. But it was also a subtle hint that the new Elite i20 didn't want to give the new Volkswagen Polo or the Fiat Punto Evo much of a head start. And so we get it before even a global unveil that will happen in October at the Paris show. Now the previous generation i20 with the fluidic design philosophy had a lot going for it, uh, especially with the curves and the smooth lines. Uh, but things are a lot more straighter with the elite i20, which is a lot more sharper and as you can see, a lot more European really in terms of overall design. Now Hyundai says it wants to transform the image of the i20 from it being a lot more youthful in terms of design to now being a lot more bolder. Now most of you have been reacting fairly strongly on our CNB Facebook page on the new design on the Elite i20. At least for me I can tell you that it was not love at first sight when I saw the car. But I'm hopeful that it will start growing on me as I get to know it. Growing up isn't always bad, especially when it comes to car design. And so the new Fluidic 2.0 styling allows the new i20 to look bold. And the big focus is to now have one uniform family look across all Hyundai cars of the future instead of keeping the smaller ones different to the high-end ones as we saw with the first-gen Fluidic sculpture design. The hexagonal grille and the swept-back headlamps are prime definers of the new design look. Strangely, no daytime running lights, which made quite a statement on the outgoing model. Wonder why? A pleasant surprise are the 16-inch wheels that show up on the two top-end trims. Of course, the entry variants will get 14 inches and so won't look quite as ample. The rear is where the car really scores. It really is Alfa Romeo meets Veloster. High-riding tail lamps that are beautifully sculpted. But then there is the blacked-out C-pillar, which could have been done in a glossy or glass finish. The plastic piece may not age well in Indian conditions. Now, the Elite i20 has a nice and pleasant cabin with the dual-tone beige and black interiors, as well as the dashboard neatly laid out. What is really impressive is the attention to detail Hyundai has given to the fit and finish inside the cabin. The quality of the plastics are really, really good and feel really premium. What's also impressive that you will really like is this. While it's idling, it's fairly quiet. 
So this is Hyundai, so expect lots of features inside the cabin. You guys go have a look at the features while I hop onto the rear seat and check out the space there. It's Europe Ahoy with the interior styling and the better plastics are a relief in a market that is slipping on this off late. The three-spoke steering wheel has a nice upmarket feel to it and it comes with lots of controls mounted on it. A steering sensitive rear parking camera, front armrest with storage, a two-din audio system with 1GB storage. These are some of the highlights that you get on the top-end trims. We'd have liked to see a touchscreen multimedia interface and the other big grouse? Dual airbags are only on the topmost variant, the Asta. There is a driver-only airbag offered in the Sports and the entry variants Era and Magna have no airbags or ABS. The Elite i20 has the longest wheelbase in its segment and so space is not a problem here in the rear seat. Uh, now this seat has been pushed uh, to its normal driving position and you can see the amount of legroom that's available, plenty and plenty of it, making it a lot more comfortable. Also, the seats are firm and comfortable with good under thigh support. Uh, also, the shoulder area is quite nice. Uh, lots of uh, room available. Uh, seating three might be a little bit of a squeeze, but what will add to the overall comfort are the rear AC vents, which doesn't block the passage too much, but will certainly add more comfort to the overall experience of sitting in the rear seat. Compare the hatch to its rivals and even the Ford EcoSport and you will see that the Elite's i20 wheelbase is a winner. Boot space has shrunk a bit compared to the outgoing model but it's still good enough to fit a couple of medium-sized suitcases quite easily. Besides its good looks, the outgoing i20 model didn't exactly set our hearts on fire with its performance on the road but it still managed to offer decent driving dynamics. This has improved a bit with Hyundai adding a bit more zing to the petrol engine and more refinement to the diesel hatch. Now what I really like about the diesel engine on the new Elite i20 is the linear delivery of power and you really get a sense of that out on the highway when you put your foot down on the pedal the smooth acceleration really kicks in and you've got a lot of fun out on the highway, especially with this six-speed gearbox, which is quick and responsive. So this is a fun car out on the highway, no doubt. Remember how I talked about how quiet the diesel engine was while it was idling? And I'm quite happy to report that even at high speeds, uh, the engine doesn't get too loud. Uh, the NVH levels inside the cabins are really impressive, making the overall drive a lot more enjoyable. Hyundai hasn't brought us a new range of engines on the i20 and so it's the same family that's been slightly updated. The 1.4-litre U2 diesel engine loves being on the open road and delivers 89 bhp of power and an impressive 220 nm of torque. The six-speed gearbox is only available mated to the diesel. The 1.2-litre petrol engine has been tweaked to offer more low and mid-range power, 82 bhp on tap and 115 nm of torque. The petrol variant is mated to the 5-speed manual. Do expect an automatic to follow soon on the new i20. Impressive fuel economy figures too, with the petrol offering 18 kilometers to the litre and diesel giving 22. Compare that with the competition and you can see that the i20 is an attractive package. The big leap for the i20 is how much better it handles when compared to the earlier car. That was the one big chink in its armour and the company has tried to address it, again keeping European buyers in mind. And we're not complaining. The Indian car has a softer suspension setup over the one that Europe will get though to help negotiate bad patches of roads better. The 170mm ground clearance is pretty impressive as well. The steering has improved now and the car corners better too. Overall, the new i20 feels more confident in its ride and handling, which is a good thing. Bottom line, the new i20 is a good replacement for the successful first generation car. The introductory prices are fairly attractive too, with the petrol variant starting at 4,89,000 rupees and the diesel i20s will top off at the Asta being priced at 7,67,000 rupees ex showroom Delhi. Staying below 8 lakhs has been a smart move from Hyundai. That's not as attractive as the new Punto Evo, for instance. But now the real battle will begin when Honda launches the third generation Jazz in diesel and petrol by the start of the new year.
Does technology drive innovation or does innovation drive technology? You know what I've been thinking about? Oh, thank you. I <laughs> okay, that was for me. These guys are I all think for you. One of them is Rajiv. No, no, these no, guys no, are all for you. One of them is Rajiv. They're that not talking is, to us. That's only. I totally love you guys, and I really <laughs> like you guys. Okay, all right. I okay, what we were saying great. was, I think the okay. cool part of it was that yes. we were discussing really interesting things about cars and tech, right? So, what do you think? Is the soul of a car under the hood, or even deeper? Wait a second. That sounds like something I would say, Rajiv. Let's exchange personas for today and do exactly the opposite of what we would normally do. All right, that has some potential, I think. Uh, so you're basically saying that the techie becomes the car freak and uh, yeah, the, the techie freak. becomes the gearhead, and you take over on the other side. How's that? Good to go. Good to go. All right. So that's a very special review coming your way then. Of this from Tata Motors. The latest car is driving into the market, so it's kind of topical, it's hot, it's new. The Zest. So uh, that's what we're going to jump into. Yes, remember the road reversals. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, why did it take you guys such a long time to do a show together? But, but have you ever thought of this? It's a great question, though. Why have you and I never done a show together? It's been some years now. I think, yeah, we should have thought of this idea before. Would okay, you so watch let, it? Let's put would this you watch to it? test. Yeah, sure. Let's put this to test. Great question. So, would all of you want to see me and Siddharth do a show together? Yes? Yeah. <laughs> I think we're going right. to do a lot of shows together. We've got to think that's about this. We've got to, we got to go back and discuss this with uh, some folks back in the office. <laughs> okay, <I think>. done. <laughs> Absolutely. What do you look for when you are looking at a new car, Rajiv? I mean, is it just how well the music system is playing Yo Yo Honey Sing? <laughs> okay, that was a low blow. <laughs> no, no to Yo Yo, but absolutely yes to this. This flip, I think it's a great idea. What do you say? It is a great idea. Okay, so, done? done. Done. Absolutely. So, all yours. Yo Yo. Switch sides. Okay, let's go. Now that the roles are reversed, say hello to NDTV's new car expert, Rajiv Makhni. And an even bigger hello from NDTV's new god of tech, Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. Yeah, god of tech. <laughs> <laughs> I you like know, the sound of that. Before we get this show literally on the road, literally, I think we better convince each other that we can actually play to each other's niches. So, I'm going to tell you exactly how much I know about cars. I'm going to zoom out and tell you the biggest car expert is finally in the house let's see it so siddharth challenge is accepted watch me transform now to the geek god of the auto world this of course is the car let's start with the exterior so fantastic array of lighting out here projector lamp led rounds uh, the fact that it has daylight running lamps for its category and then the metal sculpting uh, the the shot lines are very clear no jagged edges out here well put together the sculpting on the side very interesting now this is as unlike a tata car as i've ever sat in the plastic the fitments everything else coming together well good quality nothing clunky about it then this double tone interior is interesting gives you a richer look the seats something called rugby shoulder seats i don't know what that really means but believe me they're comfortable give you good knee support and they're very well padded the only thing is because of this double tone interior the fact that the glass surface around you is a little lesser the car tends to look a little small but believe me in reality it's quite roomy Now let's take a look at the big deal in the car, the heart, the actual soul of the car, which is this engine, the Revotron 1.2T. That what Tata calls is the big game changer. Now why? It looks like a pretty normal engine, very compact. But the big deal is, for a car in this price point, it has three drive modes that you can switch the engine to. Eco, to save a lot of fuel, normal city drive, and of course, sports mode. Sports mode in a car like this, does it really work? Well, I'm about to find out. I'm in the car now driving at city mode which is normal. Let's move to eco mode. Same acceleration the car slowed down it's more sluggish but the fuel economy is looking great now for sports mode. Okay immediately you can feel the car rev the thrust is much more this is pretty interesting. All three modes actually work. That, as you may have noticed, is someone who really knows what he's talking about. That's not bad, Rajiv. But you know what? I'm going to show you that my technology quotient is much higher than your carnal knowledge. Let's take a look. 
So I can't talk too much about how the car performs because Raji has already hijacked that and told you about it. But I was very curious about the 1.2 Revitron engine, I have to say. You know, the diesel engine is a derivative of the older one. This is all new. And so uh, he's told you about the three modes, etc. Again, I won't get into that part of the technology. But there's plenty going on inside as well in terms of the gadgetry on board. That is something I will tell you about. Okay, most of the goodies are only on the XT variant. That's the top variant. So it's the central console, which is the nerve center of everything. The system has been done by Harman Kardon, which is surprising in this particular segment, right? It's usually the high-end cars that have that. The touch screen lets you operate everything. It is uh, fairly good in terms of its uh, interface. You can also use voice commands. So there's a little switch up here, just press that. Fan speed, four. Setting fan speed to four. As easy as that, but for now, I can also manually reduce it too. You also have an SD card slot here. Let's you play music, let's you use it for JPEGs, videos, whatever. The same screen works for that too. You can also pair up to 10 devices at a time. And uh, the good part is that you can actually use multiple devices at the same time. So you can use one for mu music and you could use the other one to uh, make a call. Let's do that, in fact. Let's uh, call up Rajiv and see what's happening back in the studio. Call Rajiv. The person you're trying to reach is speaking to someone else. You could wait or call again later. He's always on the phone. Well, I guess I'll have to just get back to the studio and then catch up with him. The system supports both Android 4.4.4 and the latest iOS 7. Voice and other commands take some getting used to, but the touchscreen interface works very well. All right, Rajiv, so Gadget Guru 2.0. I think so. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what, I'll give this much to you. That was pretty good. In fact, I thought you didn't know the difference between a flash drive and a flashlight. So I'm convinced about you. All right, I'm not so sure about you. I have a question. Before okay. you guys get into horsepower, RPM, UNICEF, and all such complicated abbreviations, I just want to know one specific thing. Is this a good looking car? Yeah, good question, especially the UNICEF part. I mean, what is your UNICEF rating on the... It's blue. It's blue like the UN logo, so I think it's high. But, uh, you okay. know, I have to ask you that. Do you think it's a good-looking car? Yeah, it is, actually. Ajit? Yeah. No, I think for the price point and the is category it looking it's than in, you, I think it's looking great. And I think the blue <laughs> is really looking cool. It's good to see that there's been some work put in by the styling department. Pratap Bose, who heads it up for Tata, has done some uh, something new. And at least it points to a different direction. Also, Maybe it's been well put together. The bits and pieces, as you guys say in your... Oh, I, I say in my car show, yeah. very well put together. What is it called? The the closed lines? Shut lines. The shut lines. I, 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 almost, I, almost. Almost there. there. Almost. See, I'm learning, <laughs> okay? Very well put together, at least in, in those terms, right? Yep, okay. absolutely. I think it's, uh, it's good to see that kind of progress coming from Tata Motors in particular. All right, so that was a very innovative and very different way of bringing you a review of uh, the latest baby from Tata Motors. Did you guys... Like that? Did you have a good time with that? Yeah! Yes, yeah! Really like that. <laughs> so, you know, it felt like maybe like Batman and Superman exchanged their powers for the day. So, is that what you felt too? I'll always be your kryptonite, Rajiv. <laughs> always. <laughs> Who was kryptonite? Superman's girlfriend, right? Uh, well, you know what? I think it's best that you don't say anything more now. And uh, okay. let's just let's just wrap this up. I should, yes, and I uh, thank you, though. Thank you for being here and doing this with us as well. I know. Awesome. And uh, call me back. Remember the car and bike and Rajiv show. And on that note, thank you. Thank you all.